amazing. Everyone has a different personality. Everyone is different. Even identical twins, they are different. Allah is holding everyone responsible for their existence in establishing the, the treasures that Allah Almighty has placed in us. We have to give those. Everybody's bringing to the feast everything like a potluck of their treasures to bring up society. When you shut it down and when you keep it to yourself, you know what happens? You lose it. Now you become a caucus. The power, the, the, the baraka is in the sadaka. You give, you give, you give, and you keep giving. And you can never give more than you get because Allah Almighty is Akbar. Allah says, give to me a, a beautiful loan which I will give back to you, multiply. But we don't even give that. We don't give. We are so enslaved by ourselves. And that's why when shaitan is able to attack us, the first thing we do is withdraw, we hesitate, we doubt. We fall into a cave of den of inequity. We sulk. We begin to forget about our Lord. We begin to curse our Lord. Lord tested us. And what happens, even when, jo even when Jonah salam, came to the people, he was distraught with the people's rebellion. He was distraught with the people being disrespectful to their, his, their Lord. He became so fed up, he left. But when he was in the belly of that well, Allah forgave him when he said, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, please forgive me for the sake of beloved Muhammad sallallahu because all the prophets is the deputy of the prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa and no one knows that. He is the seal of the prophets, physically. But his prophethood continues, that light still continues, and those who are saying, oh my Lord, please do not leave me in the hands of my ego. Oh my Lord, please do not leave me in the hands of Satan. There are always going to be those people to be among people, to be a reminder, to be walking and talking Qur'ans. Are they persecuted? Yes. Does Satan attack them? Yes. But Satan can't stop them from doing what they do. Look how they did Job. When Satan attacked, attacked Job, taking everything from Job, his family, his wealth, his health, all his friends, everybody cursed him, said, curse your Lord, man. This Lord you called it on, look what he did to you. This is what Satan does every time. Look what your Lord did to you. I see, that's the first thing he comes with. When we are vulnerable, when it's something that our ego cannot understand, instead of us turning to a line being patient, we listen to Satan. This is an opportunity for him. He waits from positions that we cannot even aware of, and he waits for those vulnerable minutes when we are vulnerable to say, oh, I'm angry about this. Then he attacks. See, I told you. Dang, for real? Law doesn't exist. That's only in your imagination. You are the one. You are the one. Forget that. Forget that person. Forget those people. Forget this. Forget the other. And we buy into that. And we get sucked in every time. And wonder why our resources start to fall down. Even if Allah gives us, allow us to be doing it. Our hearts are not happy. There are people that have many millions of trillions of dollars. But their hearts... They're not servants of their Lord, so they feel that they're in poverty, even with that. And there are people that don't have any of that, and they have their Lord, and they feel that they are wealthy. Because any time, Allah Almighty sends the dunya to be their, the dunya is their servant. Any time they may say, oh my Lord, uh, send to me what I'm in need to do your will. If 
they have to do with if they have a law Almighty's will or through them is to establish something in a city or a country or whatever. Allah Almighty sends the people, He sends the resources, He sends the sustenance because they're looking to their Lord. And that sustenance is coming because they're asking for Allah to send it so that they may do Allah Almighty's will. Allah never sends His servants without the support of heavenly power and earthly power. When Moses came, he, he set him up. When the Prophet Muhammad, he set him up. All of them had what they're in need of to do what they needed to do. Allah Almighty, for the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu he sent the Sahabas with them. He sent wealth with him. He sent everything he needed with him to do what he needed to do. Did Shaitan come among their camp? Yes, he did. Because that's who he is. He is the sort to see who's going to be true to their Lord. Allah says, don't think you're going to say you believe and you're not be tested. Allah is always testing to see who is true in word and deed. Allah tested, oh, I ain't playing no more. I'm taking my stuff home. I ain't going to play no more. I'm not going to give my all no more. You weren't really real in the beginning to say that. Because if you're really gangster, you're going to get mad. And you're going to call on your Lord and say, I'm hitting this. I'm, I'm fighting you. Come out wherever you are. It's going to be more and more victory. I'm fighting you. Weak people can never establish anything. A weak believer, you might as well not even believe. Because all Satan is going to do is just get out the way. As soon as he shows some muscle or something, you're going to get out the way. But the strong ones are going to fight. And those are the ones that Allah Almighty loves. Either it's either martyrdom or victory for them. You're never going to take them off of their square. Even if you take them out physically, they are still with their Lord, still working. Allah says those who die, they're not dead, they're still working. You don't think the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu is still the Prophet? If Allah is saying he's a seal of the Prophets physically, and their Allah is not sending any other Prophets, that means there's no need to send them anyone else, because he's still the Prophet of Allah. Always was, always will be. And that's what we don't understand. We don't understand it. We have so much power, we're not using our power. Because we are doubting ourselves. How can you doubt yourself? You, you didn't even bring yourself in existence. You didn't even bring yourself in your mother's womb. You didn't bring yourself out your mother's womb. How can you put it on you that way? Somebody had to bathe us and clothe us. Who was looking after us? Allah was looking after us through them. That's why you can't describe Allah Almighty. You can't praise Allah Almighty enough. Even Allah white God is not enough. It doesn't come close to the greatness of Allah Almighty. And we are disrespectful because that power that Allah put in us, we cannot be mediocre. We cannot live powerless with that power. If we're not powerful, it's a disrespect to the one who gave us that power. Whining and crying and complaining about what? No minded people. Allah has took, taken people like that and wiped them out because of their disobedience and disrespect. They were scholars, they were doctors, lawyers, Indian chiefs, presidents, kings, queens. Allah replaced them. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Allah, enough is Allah for a witness between me and you. He knows what is in the heavens and on earth. And it is those who believe in vanities and reject Allah that will perish in the end. <laughs>